In this video, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what's in my rc.conf and a quick mention of what each particular entry does. Right, at the top, we have clear temp enable. And what this does, it clears out your temporary, your temp directory on every system reboot, prevents it from getting full of uh, various files that you no longer need. Um, in my case, I've actually set my temp directory, my temp folder, to be stored in RAM. So, although I've got clear temp enable, I really don't need that anymore because uh, obviously the RAM gets, you know, emptied every time you reboot. So, if you have your temp directory on a hard drive or an SSD, then clear temp will actually clear the the various knickknacks um, on every boot. Next up we have syslogd uh, underscore flags and this will stop syslog from opening a socket. Um, it's really highly recommended that you do this. It stops people from able to access any via any exploits um, unless of course you do remote syslogging. In which case, you know, leave it as is. Send mail, uh, send mail enable. Um, send mail really is only if you're running a server, uh, a mail server in particular. So in this particular case, because I'm using this as a desktop computer, um, the send mail is disabled. There are some entries which do a better job than uh, this one liner. Um, you got to remember that this rc.conf is really, to a certain extent, it's, I want to say, an organic file, but it's something which grows over time. You know, if I discover a new uh, entry or a new function, I can just uh, enable or disable it as, as time goes on. And uh, you, you do tend to get a lot which you do disable and then just leave. So it builds up. So in this particular case, I've got several entries which are, uh, you know, repeating each other. But anyway, uh, next is host name. Obviously this sets the host name of your system. Uh, key map, again, is another self-explanatory one. Um, this, uh, I mean, it has changed over a while, but this one uh, sets the correct key map. Uh, in this particular case to the UK. Um, if config, well, this uh, sets, this particular command sets a, a static local IP address rather than relying on DHCP. Default router tells the system which uh, route it should be using for traffic. SHHD allows secure shell uh, daemon to run in the background. And it allows you to log in uh, via SSH from any other computer, ideally only from your own LAN. It's set up so it's not accessible from the outside world. Mouse D or Mouse Ed. I've heard people say that. Um, this starts a mouse service when FreeBSD comes up. Uh, it allows us to go and copy and paste on the command line. The next one is NTP date. Uh, it synchronizes my system's time via NTP. Uh, NTPD enable is the NTP daemon. And NTPD flags. In this particular case, the, uh, the dash G allows the time to be set to any value without restriction. So if, you, if you're catching up on a big time jump or your system clock is wrong, it allows you to make a large um, alteration. <coughs> the next one is Dbus. Uh, I think a lot of people might be familiar with Dbus, even in the Linux world. This starts the Dbus messaging daemon. The next is KLD list, which is really um, it loads up the kernel modules after all the local disks are mounted. So it's a more or less some of the last things it does before uh, the user experience starts. So in this case, um, you've got Linux, 
NVIDIA, NVIDIA mode set, because it's a relatively new card, and Fuse for accessing file systems. The DevFS, the DevFS underscore system rule set uh, is load up the rules as defined in the uh, Etsy forward slash DevFS dot rules for USB permissions and peripheral permissions, etc. LPD underscore enable. Um, we don't, I don't need this running at the moment because uh, I do my printing via cups. So it's a set to know. Speaking of which, is underneath is cups D, which is the cups daemon. And uh, I want it to start when the system starts. So you put yes. VboxNet underscore enable is the virtual box network adapter. So you can obviously communicate with the outside world via any uh, virtual box sessions. Next is NFS underscore client enable. Uh, so it starts the, the NFS client service at boot. Um, so I can access my uh, NAS server, which is running NFS. We've got clear temp enable again, a second time, unfortunately. I, uh, I need to get rid of that one. Fuse enable. Uh, well, I really should remove this one as well because uh, Fuse is loaded in the KLD underscore list. So I don't need it in this one. Vi recover. Uh, Vi recover underscore enable. It's really to stop notifications of uh, VR files that need to be recovered. Next is uh, Linux underscore enable. And this really just enables the Linux ABI or the Linuxulator. I said it right. Dev, DevD underscore enable turns on the DevD process uh, and deals with different device events in the in the system, say for instance, keyboard, mouse, etc. Update underscore MOTD, which is message of the day. Um, you know, some people like to have it when they when they open up a a terminal session or when they first log in if you're using StarTex. But I disable it because really it's, you know, I don't need it. So this one just disables it from popping up. Next is USB-D enable, which is the uh, USB daemon really. And if you want any kind of USB devices to be working on the system, you really need that on. Send, right, this next block of this next block of four are all send mail. So it's like the early one. This one's really just disable send mail from either taking up any resources or bugging you with any messages if you're not running a, a mail server on FreeBSD. So we've got send mail enable, um, send mail submit enable, send mail outbound enable, and send mail MSPQ enable. Um, these four together really will disable. It's a tenacious little thing, but it just really will say, uh, disable send mail. Microcode underscore update enable, which is just update the microcode of the processor at startup, so you get the latest uh, code. Power D enable, enable a power sa saving uh, service. Particularly useful if you have a laptop. Not so much if you have a desktop, because the, the next entry, which is PowerD flags, uh, tells it for high adaptive and adaptive. So really what it's saying is, if you plugged into the mains, it means if you plugged into the mains on top performance, if you're using battery, then maybe save some power. I don't know why I've got it in this. I think it's left over for when I copied over from a, a laptop that I had. Uh, but in this case, I really don't need it, but I'll leave it in. Uh, next is clear temp enable again. So it's third time. Followed by, now we've got three entries which deal with, I think really it's hangover from my days when I used to use an Amiga. I used to love the fact that you could have on your desktop, and have, you know, a, a RAM disk. So if you're uh, unpacking anything in the, like a, a TAR file or a, um, anything similar 
or a zip file on the Amiga, I think it was, I don't know, it could have been something else. And or you're downloading anything or anything like that, that you just you just do it in your RAM disk and it's instant and it's fast and uh, you don't have to worry about deleting it because when you start the system it's gone anywhere. So I've always um, so I've always liked the idea of uh, having a RAM disk. And so on this system I've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. So there's plenty really to spare. Um, so in this case, these three entries are temp, uh, MFS, is yes, so it uh, allows the service to start. The temp uh, size, obviously, is to do with how much of memory are you setting aside as your temp file, which is set in RAM, basically in RAM disk. In this case, I'm giving uh, eight gigabytes. Uh, so that leaves me 24 to, to mess around with. It's not taken up, but it's a, an allowance. So if I use it, it will take up 20, it will use eight gigabytes of memory, but it's not, I'm not, if, if I never use it, if I don't put anything, if I don't put anything in it, uh, I'm not losing eight gigabytes. So you know what I mean? It's only used when I need it to be. It's very particularly useful as, um, if I'm doing any satellite temporary thing in video editing, I know you really should use the scratch sticks, but it kind of acts as a scratch stick, and it's really quick. Um, and then tempfs underscore flags. This one is disable soft updates on the uh, temporary folder directory. Uh, next is uh, another VBox net, um, a repetition of the one earlier. And the next three um, is really webcam D enabled. And it allows the microphone and webcams, etc., uh, to work. So the first one, it really, it starts the daemon on uh, boot. The second one um, is really the flags and it's telling the to register the device uh, to the HAL daemon. I really don't know why it's there. I think I, I read somewhere about getting a uh, TV adapter to work and I think I left it in there. I don't need that one actually. I might get rid of that. And the final one, the webcam D device uh, zero underscore name that's just basically telling the computer to recognize the webcam without me having to sort of like look it up, which, you know, you can do it by D message and then look at the, or USB config. You can look at the, the, the output and, it, and then you just put it into webcam D. But this one's a lot easier because it actually just includes it in the, in the actual um, start. Next is uh, syscontrol info and Sys control by name, improved load. Now these two um, are part of the Sys control view uh, utility or application, and uh, it just allows you to interact with the Sys control tree uh, a little bit better. They're not essential, but they're part of what makes the program uh, function a lot easier. And then uh, second to last, we've got Dump Dev, which really. I don't need. Uh, it's just really if you get any kind of if anything crashes or whether there's any problems, it will dump a, an out a crash dump really, um, a rather large file telling you what, where, and how. And this way, you can specify where you want it to be. In this case, I've got it disabled with no, but you can actually uh, you can set it wherever you want it to be. And SDDM, which is uh, enable which starts the desktop manager at boot, if that's what you use. I sometimes use it. In fact, I use it on my secondary desktop. I don't use it on this one. I prefer to use StarX, so that's why it's uh, not enabled. And that's it, basically. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I often find that it's something which grows over time. I mean, I have trimmed some things back. I've missed them several multiple entries. But yeah. That's it. If you've got any questions, then please leave them in the comment section down below. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.